Welcome to the Antique Vibrator Museum. Let me show you around. So here we have in one room, basically the history of this one industrial object with great social significance from the late 19th century all the way through the 1970s. I'm Dr. Carol Queen, sexologist and curator of the Antique Vibrator Museum in San Francisco. And today I'm going to answer some questions for Atlas Obscura. The most common question is basically, are you kidding me? Because the history of the vibrator has got some fun facts. How have vibrators been marketed to women throughout history? A couple of millennia ago, medical doctors determined that a problem called hysteria was being caused by the uterus coming unmoored from its moorings and wandering around the body causing trouble wherever it went. Now, the uterus doesn't actually do that medically, but for a while that was a good enough description of what they termed hysteria. So we got centuries of physicians who found that hand massage to the point of hysterical paroxysms of relief. You might want to call your orgasm that on a Saturday night. It has such gravitas. At a certain point, enough people had gotten better or had at least been treated by doctors using vibrators that when vibrators became consumer items, there was a rush to them. The story that was being told about the vibrator at the turn of the 20th century was that it was a miracle machine to help practically whatever might have ailed you. Almost none of these were sold as sex toys. The closest you got was sort of cheeky ad copy that said, this is my favorite, almost like a miracle is the healing power of vibration when rightly applied. To which I can only say, right on, that is so true. How did the museum acquire the vibrators in the collection? Joni Blank, who founded Good Vibrations, bought vibrators at flea markets and antique stores. There are also many vibrators in the museum that people donated to us. And this is actually the most exciting way to get a vibrator. So we're delighted that there's a mix of, of sources for these vibes, but certainly the fact that people run in with a brown paper bag with an old vibrator inside, set it on the counter and say, I want to give you this and then run away is always a treat. They don't always run away either. Sometimes they stay and talk, but sometimes they run away. What is the oldest vibrator in the collection? The likelihood is high that uh, one of Dr. Makara's hand crank pre-electric vibrators is the oldest one that we have. Makara's was made from the 1850s to the 1900s or 10s. And because the thing was devised before electricity, it's a steampunk looking item, although everything was pretty steampunk looking until about 1919. Which vibrator in the collection has the most novel design? The Detwiller. It is a little smaller than many 19 teens vibrators, and it ran not on electricity, but on compressed gas or air, like a tiny jackhammer. <laughs> Behind me in the large case, are a couple of beautiful Art Deco vibrators from the 1930s. One of them is a beautiful green color, the other one is black, and it's a Rolex. And I'm not sure if it's that Rolex, but it might be. Pretty fancy vibrator anyway. The Wikipedia entry for vibrator mention, mentions a design that uses the flow of air from a vacuum cleaner to stimulate the clitoris. There is no citation to back this up, I bet there isn't. However, we do have a vibrator that attaches to a vacuum cleaner over in our case from the 1950s. It was an attachment that you could buy separately to use with your Filter Queen vacuum cleaner. To my knowledge, the vibrator that I'm talking about for Filter Queen had nothing to do with a flow of air on the clitoris. 
In the old days, this had to do with making the hose of the vacuum vibrate. And then you could do whatever you could think of that you needed to do with the hose. PSA, don't use your vacuum cleaner as a sex toy, especially if you have a penis. I mean this. Don't even experiment trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Some of those things have fans in there. Don't do it. When you call someone a dildo, it's usually meant as an insult. What would it mean if you called someone a vibrator? Okay, let's start by saying, stop calling people dildos to insult them. It's a funny word, all right. Fair enough. But a dildo is a noble implement and many, many people enjoy them very much. And if we call somebody a vibrator, I think we would be calling them a competent go-getter who knows what needs to be done and does it.